Okay, 3D model of the uh, King's Chamber. So it'll be like the basically the uh, cross section of it. But there's some nice geometry, but also will connect to significant weights and measures uh, that will join to other, yeah, just a storm of a symphony of coincidence with these things. Let's say we have a construction line to begin with. And, uh, Vestica now, I'm just doing this just to show, so I might be a little bit out. Uh, you, know, you want a fine tip pen and really take your time to get everything, you know, you want to get everything Mickey Mouse, as they say. So it all really just emerges from the Vestica. It's just like we were saying, <laughs> many of these other things, just this really, really simple ge geometry and so much emerges from it. Now, with that now, what we need to do is create a line going across, we can use those vesica points to do that. And with that we don't want to change the compass quite yet, so we keep it on that point. Just to draw a mark there. Mark that line as well. Go to the edge of the vesica, create a bit of an arc. Same on the other side, and this is just to create those uh, to get the rectangle. Now you could use a, a a set square or whatever. I just want to stay with compass and straight edge. And so now with that, we set our compass to the from the center to the edge of the vesica. Okay, and then we can go to the bottom. Oh, well, in screen, yep. Do the same on the other side. Now we have all the points that we need to create that rectangle. Again, you on you know you want to use a fine point and get everything right. So, for instance, that line will be you know it's a fraction out, but if you follow the rules and take your time, use the finest point that you have, it all should come out. Well, actually, will will come out properly. Just depends on the time you take to put in it to get in into accurate. Because just the rules of geometry, it will work. If there's any mistake, it's human error. Right, what I actually need to do is extend these lines out. Should have done the same on the off opposite side because we'll be using these as construction lines. And the same across. Now the king's chamber is 10 Egyptian roll cubits wide and 20 Egyptian roll cubits long. So it's at a 2 to 1 ratio and we have that here. So if I set my compass back to the original setting, so the vesica is 1, 2, 3 wide, 1, 2. So we have what we need. So just go back to the original setting up from the edge. Now that line, that mark should be exactly there. So therefore, now we have the beginnings of the vesica oh, of the the king's chamber. We have the floor plan already laid out for us. So it's a two to one ratio. So, for instance, ten Egyptian roll cubits wide and twenty Egyptian roll cubits long. Now, you can might notice that that's a little bit out, but again, I'm using a thick point and um, not taking my time with it. So there we have the floor plan. And with that, we pretty much have most of the points what we need. So, okay, so now go back, go to the edge and set it to the middle. And so what I've just done is I've got the half of the vesica width on the edge of a floor plan there and I've marked that point out so okay well we'll see and do the same on the opposite side and what you do with that is now you've created this the side of the king's chamber now if it's two to one that's the floor plan 
all the thing about from the bottom corner to the top corner on the opposite side creates a three, four, five triangle. We already have a, a three to four, so we have a three, four, five triangle there. So all we need to do now is we already have that setting. Again, if I'm a little bit out on the video, it's because of the width of the of the pen. And I haven't been as accurate as I should, but again, just use a fine point, take your time. And all I need to do is now transfer this and slide it over to here. Okay, so now I draw that line. And from here to here, I'm just going to that diagonal creates a three, four, five triangle. And actually now, now just one more from these marks, we're gonna go back over to the corner of the floor. Do the same so from there to there. And so with that, you have everything you need to make a, a 3D model. I'm not going to be doing it. I'll just be doing it with uh, Sticky. But uh, you, know, you, you could take a little bit more time to draw these properly. I'm just going to freehand it. Because what you want is... Uh, that will flip up. Sorry. I missed one step. Now I'm going to extend this. Extend those lines out. Well, I've already got it there on the top. And what I need is the height. And how did I achieve that? I just want to extend this portion out just to get exactly the right uh, square root. Ah, oh, that's easy. Yep. All we need to do is to set your compass to. We've got that point now. So just those triangle on the edge there, and we do the same at the top, and that gives you the last piece you need. This will be the uh, the wall on the side of the king's chamber, upper chamber, or the ch whichever you please. So with those, we have all the points now. Uh, the only thing you really need to add just to help glue it or stick it together is some little tabs. I'll just be drawing them by hand. So they, they will just you know give us a little bit of where we can fold it in and help us stick things together. You actually, you could just using sticky tape, you wouldn't need them. But if you're gluing it together, you do need these pieces. So we'll just be folding them in. They'll just be little bits of tab. Now, again, you need these for gluing. Um, you don't need them if you're just going to do it like I am with sticky tape. Now, all we need to do is now cut it out. Trim off the rough bit quickly. Just to follow those lines. I'll be cutting the tabs out just to show sort of what the final one should look like. from the vesica and remember that the kings are the great pyramid the red pyramid and Khafre's pyramid um, all include this geometry 
that just defines so so much. You can also find it in other temples. A lot of people have been uh, researching this type of thing in depth as well, and and because it comes from compass and straight edge, it's the you know, beautiful simple laws of of geometry which you could define pretty much everything. And so, uh, why wouldn't you use it? Nature dictates it, and especially if their temples devoted to. Uh, well, for whatever reason, you know, you're going to want to follow the laws of nature, whatever your purpose is, so that's why it's so important. Okay, now, if I'd been smarter when I would have started, I wouldn't have done it on a piece of wood uh, or a table. Um, I would have had something underneath and get a, uh, a biro or a ballpoint and really draw down hard on these lines because it just makes it that much easier to fold but I could just follow the pattern. That's your first one, so fold these tabs over. Okay, so they'll be the, the, they'll form the, the walls. I'll do it if you want to go this way, because I don't want all those construction lines on the outside. Now, if you were to make two of these, it would be, you know, because it's a rectangle, it's not a, a triangle, but that's, you just make two and then you put them together, but you still just to demonstrate that uh, geometry that's involved. back and it's the simplicity of the method and the tools that's also very important it's uh, we look for um, there are certain you know simple like pi or five these are constants that are built you know just yeah universal and so okay that will that will be the wall and then we fold up that's a three, four, five, and I've left that piece on there because this will be again just a tab just to help it stick all together. That's not even really a necessary piece, but I'm keeping it on there. And again, all the the proportions are, are built into the vesica, so it's not uh, you don't really need to do it apart from the all the yeah proportions are in there to begin with. So there you have the basic beginnings of the king's chamber, or upper chamber. I know some people don't like the word king's chamber, but that's what it is. Oh, we know that's what it's called, not, you know, that's not for me to say. It can be argued till the cows come home. And that is the model of the king's chamber. I'll put the link in the description. I think I mentioned it. It's also like how to make a 3D model of the Great Pyramid itself. And you, well, we can do the same with calf rays as well. Uh, that's three, four, five triangles. I'll try to remember to do. So anyway, that's your Now you can just with a bit of glue or more time time sticky paper, you know, a sticky tape, and there's a king's chamber. Now that creates a so that would be the floor plan of 10 Egyptian royal cubits by 20 Egyptian royal cubits. This is a the ratio here would be two, three, square root of five. I've got sticky tape there, so but three, two, square root of five. And that would be the bottom corner, and that would be the opposite corner.
corner and across there is a three, four, five triangle. And if I made it the same size, I could have fit those together, but that's what I mean. If you make two of them at the same time, you can do a proper model. Now, this one now, the height of a king's chamber is not in Egyptian royal cubits. It turns out to be canonical cubits, 11 canonical cubits, which is based on a pendulum which describes the uh, Great Pyramid, including the cycle and sockets by coincidence. And 19.08 feet is also a lovely conversion point, Doric, Ionic, um, as well as the long foot, which is the Persian foot, but also that goes back into uh, quite some uh, time ago and it, it's not just a nice connection or there's just that lovely series of harmonic numbers uh, which is so important to Pythagorean schools as in the three four five triangle which defines so many other bits and pieces so with this have a good one uh, I'll post that I'll do one of Caffrey's pyramid as well because that's three four five triangles too. make a 3d model of that have a good one